Welcome back to Manny Court and the Lotus Cup Europe. We are halfway through the opening race of the weekend. It's currently being led by Javier Georges under great pressure from Jeremy Lorenko. This is a fight a little bit lower down the order. It's Thierry Verhees leads the way from Anthony Fournier and John Packer. They've got Nicholas Walker and Steve Williams in close pursuit behind them as they reel off another lap. Head through the very quick left-hander and then onward towards the challenging Estoril turn. Who could get Jack Villeneuve sticking Williams in the barriers on the exit during qualified back in the mid 90s? And then it's the long run down the Adelaide straight. And there's the fight for fourth, still headed by Nicholas Frere. Under the pressure of Christoph the Zodra and now Nick Abson. Then we've got this next group of cars as Fournier has got John Packer on his tail. We ride in car with Anthony Fournier heading towards the braking zone for the Adelaide hairpin. And to the inside, launching to the inside, is Nicholas Walker who takes a big old ride over the kerbs. Walker continues on his way as John Packer looks to reclaim the place that he lost on the brakes. Can't quite do it. Steve Williams also looking to see if he can squeeze up a couple of places. And in fact, it's Packer who really loses out as Williams glides past him. So John Packer having really instigated that manoeuvre. Now finding himself dropping down the order, but then Williams runs wide in the Evora. We drop into the production fight in car with David McAnulty. The engine roars en route to the hairpin. On the brakes, down a couple of gears. McAnulty turns through. And that is Dennis van den Sarvel, who he is trying to apply pressure to. Back in car with David McAnulty. There is the silver release of van den Sarvel just ahead of us. Again, McAnulty gets on the brakes, then just picks up throttle, looks to the inside. Van den Sarvel having absolutely none of it shops across his bows so they remain as they were McAnulty taking lots and lots of steering lock on one hand on the gears looking for as good an exit as possible meanwhile into the traffic here are the race leaders the blue car is Xavier Georges the black machine is Jeremy Lorenko as the pair of them squirt their way out the Adelaide hairpin Signing through some of these production releases might just give the opening to Jeremy Lorenko. We're just over half race distance. In third place, it remains Gregory Rass, who stayed with this pair in the early stages, but has just been dropped a little bit in the past couple of tours. Right in car with Lorenko. He picks up the throttle. Xavier Jours, though, doing a good job of managing the pace, making Lorenko do a lot of the hard work. More traffic for them to contend with. That's Rob Woolridge, who does exactly what the race director would have told him to, sticks to the racing line, makes the faster Exige V6 Capars work their way around him as they sprint on downhill towards the end of another lap. Now, where is the opening going to come for, for Jeremy Lorenko? That's surely the question that he's starting to ask himself because he's been within a couple of tenths of a second of Xavier Georges now for several laps but he's not even really got close enough to, to make that challenge for the pass and yes there are still plenty of laps remaining but at the same time the element of surprise for Lorenko has maybe gone away somewhat there is Gregory Rass in third position Rass off in pursuit of Rob Woolridge to put the lap on him as it's Eric Van Tover who is lapped by the race leaders and that plays in terms of Lorenko who is appreciably close this time round to Xavier Georges as they head on towards the Adelaide hairpin. And this is good opportunity for Lorenko. He thinks about it, but can't quite do it. Maybe that was a dress rehearsal for something a little bit later on from Lorenko. Because, of course, the big unknown here is that if Jeremy Lorenko found a way past, could he pull clear as Dennis van den Sarvel runs into some problems? At least pointing in the wrong direction. There's Nikolai Ibsen. Powers on his way. We go in car with David McAnulty. That's Jason McAnulty just up the road ahead of him. And there goes Ibsen. Nick Ibsen has moved through into fourth place. He's beginning to break wide open that fight for fourth as well. So we suspect he might. It's Philippe Luke then, currently in fifth. There's David McAnulty applying the pressure, or at least attempting to, to Jason. But they've also got to be slightly mindful of the goings-on in their mirrors. It's really Nicholas Freire who's lost out from that. He has 
slip back into the clutches now of Jean-Baptiste Luc Thierry Verhiest and the rest of them. So here is Christophe Lezondre. It's Philippe Luc, who is his target. Lezondre still the foremost of the 211s, of course. Former race winner in the Lotus Cup Europe. Very handy driver is Christophe Lezondre. Fight for the lead continues as it ever was. Now this is the point where really Lorenko needs to start setting up Javier Georges for a run into the hairpin. A good trip through the chicane. And then a smooth negotiation of Estrell is exactly what he needs. They've got his training cars headed by Phil Capstick and Max Alves to contend themselves with. First of all, but Lorenko you can see just getting ever closer to the tail of Georges who dips on the brakes a little bit earlier than Lorenko into Estrell. Jeremy Lorenko using all the road, runs out wide. That will give him... He hopes the swooping line through as they get the power down and sprint on their way. Capstick, meanwhile, also looking to overtake. Headlights being flashed by Javier George. This is the last thing he wants to go in car with Lorenko. And they may just run out of road here into the hairpin. Oh, there was a gap there for Jeremy Lorenko had he chosen to take it. But he thinks better of it. It means they all safely negotiate the hairpin. It's one of the nice things about the Lotus Cup Europe, of course. The drivers are all very friendly with each other off track and it means that the on-track behaviour is generally exemplary. You don't see the unnecessary incidents that sometimes plague other categories of racing. But this battle is beginning to reach its boiling point, you suspect. Getting towards the last stage of the race as well. The Renko is running out of laps. He knows that he needs to make this pass on Javier Georges sooner rather than later really is giving the Renko plenty to focus on. Nicholas Frere, meanwhile, has got to focus on his mirrors because there is Jean-Baptiste Loup, Thierry Verheist, Nicholas Walker as we return to the fight for the lead. And again, the Renko gets the good run on Georges down towards the Adelaide Hepin and this time there's no traffic. Is the Renko going to be close enough to challenge? He comes out at the last moment and launches the inside down into first gear get the power down the way he goes and he makes the move stick lovely stuff that from Jeremy Lorenko he takes the lead of the race eventually away from Xavier Georges and that I have to say wasn't the most locked in of the opportunities that we've seen for Lorenko it was the one where he felt confident to commit Xavier Georges saw him coming gave him racing room and therefore through goes Lorenko right in car with that new race leader now can he to build that buffer over Georges. Already you can see it's opened out to three or four car lengths. But they still have the traffic conundrum. But they manage to ease clear of Jean Poitier. And they've got a couple of laps remaining. Renko can't afford though to relax his focus. Now he's in the lead of the race. He also can't afford to any sort of a dip in pace because that will give Xavier Georges the chance to jump right up onto his tail. In car with Christophe Lezondre. And Lezondre closing up onto the tail of Philippe Loup. And Loup caught a little bit in traffic there. That's Max Alves who he's trying to find a way past. And Alves got that a little bit wrong. They've also got Yano Santa as well just ahead of them in the bright yellow it was each V6 Cup Art and the Zondra therefore taking advantage as they close onto the tail of Santa into the final chicane it's Christoph the red nose 211 trying to find a way past Santa at the moment but the straight line speed of the Exige V6 Cup Art makes that fairly tricky undertaking meanwhile Thierry Verheist under a little bit of freshen out from Nicholas Walker again they've got traffic between them that's Thierry Edouard who is lapped by Walker Walker in fact getting a very good exit from the corner closing up onto terms with the Evora again as they head onward towards the conclusion of the lap well, we saw earlier on in the race of course that Walker has got more than an abundance of commitment when it comes to overtaking moves if he needs to take advantage of it let's see what he can do now huge amount as closes up on Verhees. They've still got as well Jean-Baptiste Loup there. He is in the 211 
who is hardly romping off into the distance either. So some of these battles coming together very nicely in the closing stage of this first race of the weekend here in Manicor. And lots of plays as well from Steve Williams. And this time Walker's got a very good run on Verhees. They've got Phil Capstick's Tron lap. Capstick again does the right thing, sticks to the racing line, but I think that may serve to inadvertently box out Nicholas Walker. Indeed, that's exactly what happens, so there's no opening there for Walker. And Capstick has to make the corner. Makes Walker take the slightly circuitous route. Doesn't really cause any undue duress for Walker. As headlights ablaze, here comes Jeremy Lorenko on route to the chequered flag. It was a very nicely judged drive, this from Lorenko. He dropped behind Xavier Georges from pole position, waited for the right moment, pounced, took the lead, and is going to come through to win the first race of the weekend in the Lotus Cup Europe here. Manny Cord chased the line by Xavier Georges with Gregory Rass in third place. Plenty for Jeremy Lorenko and Xavier Georges to enjoy about that. I think they will have thoroughly enjoyed their dice. Have a look then at the final results. Lorenko wins it from George, then Gregory Rass and Nikolai Ibsen. Christoph Lazondra, the first of the two 11s in sixth place, just behind Philippe Loop. John Packer eventually faded to 13th. Nicholas Frell be disappointed with 12th position. David Harvey well up in 15th place. And John Rass once more to the four of the production runners. Great drive from the McAnulty's to 26th and 27th place respectively Rob Woolridge it is who concludes the top 30 as ever in a championship with such high driving standards the casualties were few and far between and lost Dennis van der Sarvel, Frank La Roche and James Knight along the way for Jeremy Lorenko it's time to celebrate on the podium Magny Cor I don't know what to say. It was a great race with Javier. I've been dreaming of it for a very long time. He drove very well and our friends have done a great job. We have a great team with great people. We could be proud of our teamwork. We did a really good job. Xavier, congratulations back on the podium after race one. Must feel good. I'm very happy to be on the podium because after Dijon, which didn't go very well, we only finished putting the car back together on Thursday, the day before the race. And thanks to our friends, we're on the podium today. Two cars crossed the line, we dreamed of it, but today he was a lot faster. I got a good start. I could keep up with him for the whole race, but he was a lot faster. I'm very happy to have done this race with him. We had a lot of fun. That concludes race one and day one here at Manicor, but stick with us because we'll be back after the break with more action.